by Wall Street so we can really bring national attention and really get a fire going in our broader movements while we take leadership from and support people that are doing long-term organizing in their workplaces and in their communities so we can really win larger victories for justice uh, based on the leadership of these struggles that have been going on since before 2008 and need to really go forward to get us out of this current rut and towards the broader victories. Voices of the students who joined with the tens of thousands in Foley Square in downtown Manhattan, surrounded by the courts as union leaders gave their speeches, then people marched from the square to Liberty Plaza, where the encampment called Occupy Wall Street uh, has been for the last three weeks. to the Occupy Wall Street encampment, where somewhere along Broadway, thousands, tens of thousands of people are marching. What's your name? My name is Robin Kaplan. And where are you from? Originally, I'm from Canada, but I've been living in the States for two years now. What do you think of the media coverage of this? I think the media coverage is focused on the incoherency of the message. Uh, my thoughts on this is that the American people have been asleep for the last 35 years. This is them finally figuring out how to collectively organize, how to move together as one. And then as time progresses, people will become more organized and start forming different factions and having uh, more singular demands. What is the sign you're saying? So what, is, what is the sign you're holding? My sign says that we're approaching a trillion dollars in student debt. We have a reported rate of 9.1 percent unemployment, which is pretty false as it is. And that is a huge problem. What democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Tell me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Tell My name is Arash Nafisi. Uh -huh. And where do you work? I also work at Montefiore Medical Center in what the Bronx. What kind of a doctor are you? Internal medicine. And what's the sign that you're carrying? My we sign says divided. Doctors Against Poverty. Why are you joining the Occupy Wall Street encampment? This is just one part of the struggle, one part of the fight. We believe in health care for all, just like people here believe in housing for all and all sorts of other rights. And what is your name? My name is Magni Hamso. Where do you work? I also work at Montefiore Medical Center. Uh -huh. And what's your specialty? I'm in, I'm in primary care. So why is a doctor coming down to Occupy Wall Street? I think we work in the South Bronx, which is one of the poorest congressional districts in the country. And I think we see income inequality every how, single day. So how does it affect people's health? I mean, people are unable to afford their medicines. I mean, I think just people aren't able to deal with their health issues because they're dealing with housing, they're dealing with jobs. I'm Rachel Jolet. I'm a nurse at Columbia Presbyterian Hospital. I'm with the New York Nurses Association, and we're constantly understaffed. We constantly run out of supplies. And when you look at just the dichotomy of where the money is in society, it just doesn't make any sense at all. And we're, you know, I mean, we're affected all the time. We work 12-hour shifts. Um, it's, you know, frequently not safe. It's frequently... Um, for the patients or for the nurses and for the doctors and um, it's you know it's an outrageous situation it's an outrageous um, economy and society that we live in where one percent has so much and 99 percent are fighting for scraps my name is Intikana and there's a piece I have free for the people change comes with time it's not an action it's a process it's more than just marching it's what you do after the protest it's giving back to the hood that makes you conscious what makes an activist activate when they graduate with a bachelor's or a master's from the masters with the masters screaming master master of all the answers when they've mastered it we can try to shape the world if we could try to change how we imagine it it's okay to make mistakes but if freedom's what they say we don't have time to waste. My name is Francis Golden. Um, Mumia's 
I'm a literary agent. My sign says I'm 87 and mad as hell, and I'm mad as hell is what the rich are doing to the poor. They're taking it all, kicking people out of their homes, losing their pensions. If we don't get all mad as hell, we're going to be a fascist state. And look at what's happening today. We're fighting back, and that's what's going to make the difference. Can you tell me about your sign? What does it say? Lost my job, found an occupation. And what does that mean? Well, actually, um, what, I, what I look at this event more is in, a, is, is in a, the terms of popular education. So I think that as protest is a form of popular education, so it's it's thinking about what are the alternatives to, to employment when we're, we're talking about jobs, well, we're not talking a lot about what the alternatives are. Get down. There's an occupation in the I'm Egyptian American and what the Middle East has shown us is that people when they come together for one cause are able to really impact and affect change and part of the Arab Revolution the youth there was a great momentum of youth and I feel like that has been mobilized the world and brought globalization to a whole new world where ideals and values are starting to take over instead of corporations and other things so um, I feel there's a transfer of energy uh, positive energy and I hope that the momentum continues my name's Manny I'm with the organization called Fierce, and we work to build the leadership and power of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer youth of color here in New York City between the ages of 13 to 24. And um, today we marched with a contingent of community groups, uh, community groups who are doing amazing work in the city from the ground up, people who are in the communities, who are working for rights and housing, who are working for safe um, access to public space, who are working for education and jobs, and organizing immigrant communities to fight for their rights as well. And so we all gathered together and really wanted to bring a, a people's presence down to Wall Street today. My name is Julian, and I'm passing out flyers talking about decolonizing Wall Street because this is occupied land. It says, as the world watches us occupy Wall Street, let's not forget the history of occupation on which this street was built. In 1685, the Dutch West India Company enslaved African peoples after failing to effectively enslave American Indians to construct a wall, Wall Street, that barricaded the land white men had seized from native peoples. The Dutch called their colony New Amsterdam and needed to secure it from the indigenous who were fighting to take back land they had sustained for thousands of years. They were also protecting it from British colonizers. The wall secured space for white men to disparately trade shares and bonds until they formalized the practice through the founding of the New York Stock Exchange in 1792. Can you tell me your name and what is the sign that you're holding written in paint on a piece of cardboard? It says, I will believe corporations are people when Texas executes one. Some of the voices of the streets, from the rally to the protest to the march, tens of thousands of people uh, ultimately ending up at the Occupy Wall Street encampment just around the corner from, yes, Wall Street. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Juan, you wrote a great column about the significance of this rally uh, yesterday in New York City, the Union rally. Yeah, well, in yesterday's Daily News, I pointed out the fact that people have forgotten. It was 41 years ago uh, this year when there was an anti-war march in the financial district down on Wall Street of, of, of thousands of, of young, uh, uh, young people, college kids, that was brutally attacked by construction workers. So bands of construction workers rampaged through downtown. They actually invaded City Hall because then-Mayor Lindsay had, had, uh, had ordered that flags be flown at half-staff because the Kent State massacre had just occurred. Uh, and the, uh, the construction workers literally up and down the financial district, uh, beat, uh, brutally beat scores of young people. And now you have this situation, the irony, that the labor movement now, many of the unions at least, have joined together with this new generation of young protesters, uh, and instead of seeing themselves as apart from them, have seen the need to unite with them and to follow their example and to insist uh, in this coordinated voice now growing uh, that the American people are really outraged about what has happened with Wall Street and with this financial crisis. 
given the lack of accountability that's occurred in this society. So I think it's a major shift. Uh, now, the construction workers' unions weren't there in the march, but at least they weren't organizing to attack uh, the protesters. And so I think this is a major change, certainly, for the labor movement in the United States. We're going to go to break and come back to Naomi Klein, who just came up from Washington, D.C., where she had been involved with a major protest, which we'll talk about, but joined in the streets and went over to the Occupy Wall Street encampment. Stay with us.